Hey guys, welcome back to part two, showing you the power of click script and showing you how to reshape this data utilizing the cross table function. Uh, if you remember, we took this data from this Excel spreadsheet, which was formatted in a cross tab report, and we were able to basically flatten it with a few lines of script, as well as with the help of our data wizard. So in this video, we're going to continue on uh, with this approach, showing you how I can add additional dimension values um, to the data structure, as well as show you how we could add in that aggregated column. If I go back to the Excel report, you'll see we have a few lines of the title that have valuable information in there that we might want to include. Because if these Excel spreadsheets are coming into you with different dimension values, such as northern for region or different country, for example, or different continent, you're going to want to eventually include that into your data structure so you can do the appropriate reporting on it. And as well as the aggregated column, you still might want to be able to report off of the total values that were sold for these particular items. Now, you might not have the individual level of detail to see how many apples, bananas, or oranges were sold, but you could see the total uh, quantity sold for these particular items. And I'm going to show you how to include that in there, too. So let's go back to ClickSense Desktop. And what we're going to do is, very simply, if I just want to add in some dimensional values, I can do so by just putting in a string encapsulated by single quotes, such as I want to add my country for United States. So I type in United States, and then I say as country, and then add a comma. And that adds that particular dimensional value. And I could do the same thing for, let's say, uh, southern for the particular region. I'll say as region. Okay, and you can continue that with you know a variety of different dimensions that you would like to add. Uh, if I wanted to increase the number of dimensions, let's say utilizing a function to get time data, such as year or month, and all I had was order date, I could utilize the order date field and then use the function year, for example, with the order date as an argument, and just use an alias as year, and that will now give me a year column in my data. And if I wanted to repeat that for month, I could do the same thing with month. Okay, so now I have these additional data values that I could use as dimensions, so I can select and analyze different areas within the data set. And when you do that, it's important to keep track of these values, because these are going to be the repetitive values that are repeating in this uh, denormalized or flattened structure. So you need to keep count of these, because those are going to increase uh, the qualifier number within the cross table. So here we have southern, United States, state, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So here we increase this number to 6 as such. And then by doing so, we load that data structure, we go to our visualization, and then if I wanted to add country, and now you can see we have all the values for country in here as well. Okay, so that basically just allows you to add additional dimensions by wrapping the text that you type in with single quotes and then giving it an alias for a field name. Now, if I wanted to include that aggregated column for quantity sold, uh, what you'll see here is that we can link these two tables together, kind of like creating a multi-fact table. But these tables are going to be at different levels of detail, or what you hear as granularity. And which is great is that the Click Associative Engine keeps track of those levels of detail when they are in two separate tables, and uh, allows you to avoid uh, situations of having duplicate data when summarizing or aggregating uh, these particular metrics. And let me show you what I mean by that. So if we go back to the Excel spreadsheet, you can see we have this quantity sold column in here. Okay, we have a total number of items, 780. So what we're going to do back in the ClickSense uh, script is we're going to add that structure and just select those columns. So once again, I'm going to select the Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to use this data from the Southern tab. And we want to increase the header size by 4. And then we want our state. We don't want apples, bananas, or oranges this time. We just want the order date, the state, and the quantity sold. We're going to use the order date and the state as our unique key uh, to basically join these two tables together. And then we click Insert Script. Remembering what we did in the last video is I also need to filter out that where total. So I'm doing that as you see here. Okay. And then to create a unique key between these two tables, I'm just going to take the state value and concatenate 
it with the order date value by using the ampersand. And what that's going to do is give me a key field that we can use to join these two tables together. Okay, and I'm just going to paste that right up there and then increase my qualifier to 7. Now, I will show you something towards the end of the video. You might say, well, this is inefficient, Mike, because you're accessing the data twice. The source data, in this case, being the Excel spreadsheet. And I'm only doing that for demonstration purposes to show you how to set up that initial structure. There are ways to make this more efficient by utilizing the data that has already been loaded. And what I'll probably do is show you that in part three of this video, making this more efficient. Okay, so we're going to load this data structure. And then we're going to go to the data model. And in the data model, you can now see that the keys are joined. Now, remember what I said about keeping track of different levels of detail or granularity uh, because of the structure of both fact tables when doing the aggregations? Well, if I grab the KPI object and then we do a sum of the quantity sold, you can see that the value is correct, 780. And that is because of the way the engine keeps track of these different levels of detail. It's not duplicating the data or triplicating the data uh, based off of the number uh, of items. Now, let me even give you that example within the uh, table that we have here. So if I add, you can see we have items. So let's bring item up front here. And let's bring our sales up front. And let me also grab my quantity sold. And let's summarize quantity sold as well. Okay. And let's move that up in front of sales. You can see that the total value is 780. Okay. But if we look at the levels of detailed values here, you can see that these are counted twice. Uh, for the number of items that are here, or three times of that matter, because there's orange bananas and apples. So if you would actually add up all of these values here, it would definitely add up to more than uh, 780 uh, because of the number of time it's being created. So understand that in a detail structure, you know, it's viewing that particular information three times because it's laying it out. But for the actual accurate value, uh, the summation or the aggregation is correct. So when doing that, you might choose not to display that level of uh, detail for this particular aggregated value uh, in a table, let's say. But you might choose to show it uh, within a KPI value. So in a situation like this, we'd simply just remove the uh, item field, and then we'd have the, the most accurate display of, of numbers here for that particular measure. Okay, so I hope that was helpful, uh, understanding how we could add additional dimensions and then include that aggregated column. Uh, what we're gonna do next is I'll show you how to make that load script more efficient by loading the data once and then reusing that load data to create the structures that we just saw a moment ago.